So it all started with this kind of random photograph of a couple taken on the street and um, out of thousands of photographs this seemed quite engaging. So I cropped it and uh, turned it to black and white. I just want you to, incidentally, being a bit of an obsessive with colour, I just want you to experience this. Let's say, uh, look at the lady's hand right in the centre of the photograph. Just look at her hand and just stare at that for while this photograph is on the screen and then see what colour you see when this happens. See that? Isn't that amazing? All the parts of the pen, the photograph that were uh, blue or turquoise take on a pinkish peach tinge. Anyway, that's for another video. But isn't that amazing effect of colour? So let's get into the story of the making of the painting. So this part is um, oil on paper, and it's smaller than the final canvas, so it's about 24 inches high. Um, so it's specialist oil painting paper. And you can see that it's the figures are painted by hand, so the outlines are not exactly translated from the photograph, but trying to get into the rhythm of the shapes. And those rhythm of the shapes is then repeated in the background. Um, I was interested at the time in the work of artists like Willem de Kooning, who kind of hides the figures into the whole abstract of the painting. Um, so the shape of the ice cream in the foreground was a similar kind of shape, maybe echoing the shape of the lady's dress, the way it swings down, perhaps. Um, so all these shapes are just to echo the shapes of the figures. And then it gets developed. I'm a bit of a glutton for colour, so I often find it hard to just do a, choose a few colours. You know, when you've got a whole candy box full of colours, why not eat them all? Um, so that's what I start out trying to do. And then as the painting goes on, I have to sacrifice colours, subdue them, um, find some sort of colour scheme out of all these wonderful possibilities. So it's a very slow way of developing a colour idea. It's just start with everything you want and then get rid of things that you can't have. Um, and also tonally. So in this last version here, before starting the, the big canvas, you can see that a lot of the colours have become much more subdued and there's more of a stronger tonal arrangement. So the light of the background is a strong element of the picture. So having got this far then, um, I then launch into the full-size canvas. There are certain painters who are able to start in one part of the canvas and work piece by piece, patch by patch, adding on one colour next to the other colour, blending the edges as they go, and arrive at a finished result. Um, I've never really been able to do that, but I'm a bit stubborn and I like to try things that I haven't been able to do before. So in this canvas, that's what I tried to do. Um, and as you can see, so this is the first stage and then this is the finished covered canvas. And quite predictably, I wasn't that happy with it because I never usually work in that way. I usually block it in all over and change things as we go. But I tried it in this instance and I proved to myself that that's not a good way for me to work. So here's, I've made some adjustments to that first stage and made some improvements. I'm wondering if this would do. I'm always thinking about the end of the painting. You know, if I do this, if I do this move, maybe it'll be finished. Um, but it still seemed a, a bit stilted. That's one of the problems with having a painting that finds its edges, finds its resolution a bit too early then you can't really make minor changes. So I was a bit stuck with it. And in between each of these stages is probably a few months or maybe even a year. Um, these things take a long time. But rather than launching in and just attacking the canvas um, with annoyance, one thing is putting it aside for a while is a very good thing. The other thing is that sometimes I'll do this. So this image is really just from my, my phone, my iPhone. So I'll take a photograph of the painting and then with the very rudimentary editing facility, you know, a very broad marker pen, um, 
I'll try out changes. And sometimes these are done with the picture upside down. Um, so really trying out changes, making bits darker, lighter, different colors, and so forth. And this, in this instance, proved very useful because I was much more willing to make drastic changes on my phone than I would be to try it out on a painting, especially a big painting. Each change takes a lot of time and a lot of paint and you lose whatever is underneath. So this is risk-free trial. So here's a close-up of that very rough graphic image. And if we look now at the next stage of that part of the painting, you can see I've introduced a lot of the actual effects. So the effect of um, broad areas of shadow with thin gaps of light in between, which are quite accidental. Really just my ham-fisted thumbs trying to use the marker pen on the computer actually created effect of light and shadow and curving shapes that help to disguise the head and the features into the background and create interesting transparent effects. Also at this stage I decided to really redraw the figures to make them a bit more realistic um, so I gridded up the original photograph and um, made lots of corrections to the drawing of the figures. You can see the grid in this photograph. Um, so this is really great that stage on the the phone just making those big brave changes and now I've got some shapes and I can think what are those shapes going to be so things like uh, the guy's legs I don't actually have information for his legs because they're covered up by a bag in the initial photograph so I photograph my own legs my beautiful own legs wearing shorts uh, and then I photograph a carrier bag scrunching it up in the right way to make the right shape for the for the abstract red shape that I've created and also thinking about the characterization of what sort of carrier bag would this couple be carrying so this is a B&M bargains bag with the word wow on it, which just seems kind of cool. You know, people who go to Blackpool might shop at B&M Bargains with a bag that says wow on it. I find that if you find yourself a little bit too controlling, it's good to involve your studio assistants in the process. They can really break up your habits. Um, so here my assistant took ownership of this work and just put in some marks that helped me to break the preciousness of it. Another really clear influence was when I studied with Zoe Frank, who's a wonderful, um, just outstanding artist in America, and the way she's able to rework the surface without destroying it, creating more and more interest with each change. That was a very good example to me. Here I'm using glazes in the shadows cast by the newspaper and then in the lady's head. Uh, so a glaze is a thin, transparent application of paint. So you don't lose what's underneath. And here it's been wiped back to give a change to the colour and to the shape without obliterating what's underneath. From beginning to end, the painting took maybe about five years. And that sense of time allows me to live with the painting, with the characters, and to develop the characterization from things that I see, things that I think it needs. So I felt that the guy's shirt needed something on it, um, something to make it a bit more interesting. So I thought of the Superman symbol, which I had to um, look up to see what it was actually looked like, just from Google, and then try and paint it slightly in perspective as it was distorted by the, by the uh, shirt. Other things, well, I was thinking of the background setting as being somewhere like Blackpool. So I went down to Blackpool and took some photographs and found these hanging footballs and uh, buckets and spades, which are great shapes to incorporate. I find that the painting tells me when it's finished rather than the other way around. I had a show a couple of years ago and I really wanted this painting to be done for it. And I ordered a frame and I uh, thought well, just a little bit more to do and I'll be able to put it in the show. But it just didn't happen. The painting just felt like it didn't want to be pushed to a finish just yet. And so, so now it is finished. 